new season, new dungeon, a god tier artifact, and let me be real, this new dungeon is honestly pretty darn cool. It's completely different from Ghosts of the Deep that had absurdly long and slow transitions. This dungeon has not one, not two, but three bosses in total. On top of that, the transitions between the boss encounters are relatively short. It takes no effort to get to the first boss, and you can really whip through the transitions of this dungeon unlike the Ghost of the Deep dungeon. Now, in this video, we're not here to give you a guide on how everything about the dungeon works. I'm going to be making this video assuming that you know how to at least get to damage for all three of the boss fights. So as long as you know how to at least get to damage, this video will help you absolutely eviscerate all three of these bosses. The bosses do get progressively harder as you make your way through the dungeon, and the final boss is a little bit unique, especially for a dungeon boss. And we are going to be getting you to one phase these bosses. I will admit that the final boss, if you're going to one floor that boss in one phase, you have a way too tight of a window to do that. I'm just going to keep it real, but you can easily get you to knock off all of the boss's health on your way up while you're climbing the platforms. You won't have to go back down to the start and repeat the encounter from the very beginning because that boss is going to be dead by the time you make your way up there. So you leave that first floor, you're done with that first floor. You leave the second floor, you're done with that. With that being said, real quick, let me tell you about our homies over at Instant Gaming whose sole purpose is to save you money on games and their DLC, including the final shape. So if you want to get your games and DLC at a cheaper price, save yourself some money, head over to Instant Gaming. We do also have the G Fuel link, which will be right under the Instant Gaming link, which are both going to be at the top of the description. You can use code CREEP 20% off at checkout if you do want some G Fuel. But now, let us go ahead, hop into the first boss, tell you how to nuke him, which is going to be the rat. All right, now for our buddy Rat Hill, I'll be real. This boss is a pretty darn easy, and you have multiple ways about going to, to merc this boss in one phase. Any close range weapons will do. However, in this clip, we decided not to use Banner of War, although we do have a Banner of War clip on this boss that you will see. And we decided right off rip, we're gonna try Lament. We had triple solar surges on our boots, and we had one copy of Lucent Blade on our chest piece. That's it, just one copy of Lucent Blade. And for our debuff, we were just making use out of the Revitalizing Blast Artifact mod. Now, one thing to note about this boss fight and for the final boss fight is that you can give yourself a longer damage window if you let the big major chieftains spawn more of the totems. If you just kind of leave him be for just a little bit, he will spawn at least one more so for example you could go into a damage phase against our buddy rat hill right here with two totems that's all you need and the totems i'm referring to are the things that you have to cleanse at the chieftains drop the way you cleanse them you just stand in the little area around them and it'll cleanse just by you standing in that aura and i'm not the biggest lament guy but the combo that we use was two charged lights and then a charged heavy attack Pop a well right before a damage phase starts, wail on him with the sword, and he will fall over. No banner of war needed. Now, for the banner of war setup, what we did is we had two people on Worm Gods, and I was on Synthos. Of course, since you're on banner of war, you can easily just run a tractor cannon for your debuff, and there's really nothing too crazy to it. Three banner of war titans can nuke this guy with only one totem worth of time for your actual damage phase you don't even need to worry about having a navigator point either and all you really need to do is have your worm god players prioritize the enemies on the left and right side and just kind of leave the enemies that spawn in the middle to do their thing you don't have to worry about them too much as you do gotta have something in order to proc your biotic enhancements on your syntheseps make sure to have the seasonal artifact mod from whence you came pause <laughs> as that will allow you to do increased ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants. Bring a 1-2 punch shotgun, and you can call it a day. Banner Ward's gonna make this dude fall over in one totem worth of time. But of course, everybody knows that, because this is Banner of War we're talking about. All right, now for Locust, the big Taken Ogre. First things first, make sure you put on Taken spec on your weapons that you're gonna be dealing with damage to the boss with as take a spike will make your weapons do 10 percent more damage to taking combatants 
or at least roughly around that number. Either way, it's higher than what boss spec provides, so go ahead and put on take and spec on your weapons now for this boss i'm going to recommend to you believe it or not rockets who would have saw that coming rockets now in my case i was on g horn duty and i was a well warlock they really didn't want me to succeed in putting up some good damage numbers as i was playing with two hunters here we had one hunter on celestial nighthawk golden gun and we had our other hunter my good old buddy ian evolution running the good old tried and true stick the stick will give you a form of jolt damage, and we all know how good rockets are, especially the Apex Predator with Reconstruction and Bait and Switch. Believe it or not, that is the rocket that both of my other teammates were using. Now, two of us were using double special loadouts, myself included, and we had one other person running Lumina for whenever we weren't in a well, and or we didn't have a Radiant applied to us. And if we did have Radiant applied to us, we just had a 35% damage buff to our weapons instead, which we'll happily take. And my buddy Ian, he was using the good old tried and true with the horse just to give yourself a bit of dot damage throughout the damage phase. On top of having Jolt from Gathering Storm and the Arc Hunter, something else that you can go ahead and do to give yourself even more damage does lie in the artifact. That is Unraveling Orbs. Picking up an Orb of Power grants Strand Weapons Unraveling Rounds. You could easily use the Scatter Signal, which is a controlled burst overflow rapid fire frame fusion rifle and you can go ahead and use torch which is a tier 3 artifact mod where while radiant deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by strand and stasis debuffs i believe this is a five percent total buff to your weapon damage that stacks with everything else that you're using and yes this does work while you are in a well of radiance and you also want to go ahead and throw on argent ordinance as this is a 15 percent damage boost to your rockets maybe also have someone in your fire team running powerful friends in radiant light to make sure everybody is fully supplied on armor charges. Now, from my perspective, I was using Sun Bracers throughout the damage phase to continuously debuff the boss as we were using Revitalizing Blast as our main source of a debuff and to just yeet a crap ton of solar grenades at the boss and rain lava blobs on him, which definitely helped. Of course, this only works if you're able to have some sun bracer fodder near you while you're doing damage and since we are using rockets you don't want to leave too many ads or they'll get in the way of your rockets and you might go kaputski kaboom yourself with one of them teleporting or getting right in front of you as you shoot your rockets just be wary of that and really try and make use of some of these artifact mods even if you can't get argent ordnance definitely make use of torch and unraveling orbs all right now we have the final boss chimera the taken servitor which is definitely more unique than any other dungeon final boss that we have. Although, don't really pay too much attention to that little final stand at the bottom there, as dungeon mechanics will never wipe you, so just keep that in mind. But the way that damage actually works for Chimera is that it's going to start after you cleanse all the totems and the Imminent Wish debuff timer runs out. As soon as that runs out, it's go time. Get ready to lock and load, but just make sure you have that debuff meleeed onto another scorn so it doesn't kill you when that timer runs out and damage will last for as long as you have the wish empowerment buff so that is your time on that floor to go ahead and dump all the damage you can into the boss now this is where having multiple totems and letting those scorn chieftains spawn a few let them like you know relax for a little bit and spawn a couple extra totems is going to be very handy instead of just nuking them as soon as they spawn. In this clip, we started the first floor damage phase with four totems, and we had a really long damage phase compared to some of the other floors when we did not have four totems cleansed worth of time for our damage phase. Just want to reiterate that, that if you are a little bit patient with the Scorn Chieftains letting them spawn their totems, you will be rewarded in getting more damage from it, or at least more time to do damage, but it can definitely be a bit more hectic the longer you just let them sit there, so it is a bit of a give and take. Now, as you're moving your way up through the platforms, now as you make your way up through the platforms to deal damage, you will have four total platforms worth of time to deal damage, although you can totally juice this servitor in three, and if you're really cracked, you can even do it in two floors. 
Just keep in mind that this encounter can definitely be a little bit heck with all of the taken spawning. The Scorn Chieftains, their totems, you having to cleanse those totems in order to deal damage, and just the other taken gunk that'll spawn all over the floor that, if you step in it, will damage you. Now in this clip, we did juice the servitor in only three floors, and yes, we did use rockets, although I have to at least mention that the Briar's Contempt Ron Linear Fusion Rifle can absolutely juice this boss. This is one of the best encounters to use a reconstruction surrounded Briar's Contempt, which is the aggressive frame linear from Rude Nightmares. Just want to let you guys know about that, although we totally used rockets. A galley, two bait and switch apex predators, two hunters, and one well warlock. Yes, you can banner of war this boss, but you have to be doing that while airborne, and we're not going to be talking about that in this video. Our strat was very similar to what we did against Locust, the Taken Ogre, and the same rules apply here. Take advantage of those artifact mods, such as Argent Ordnance, Torch, and Unraveling Orbs. I have someone on a Strand Weapon to try and proc Unraveling Rounds on the boss to proc your Torch, and try and get yourself some damage supers, such as the good old Stick Gathering Storm, and or Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun. And yes, with Revitalizing Blast, that Golden Gun can still hit close to a million, if not over a million, even in a dungeon setting. The boss will be spawning Eyes of Acolyte during the damage phases, which can be annoying, so make sure you're at least wary of those while you are dealing damage. If you are not standing in a well, or your well is not charged, those can definitely deal some unwanted damage to you. And yes, my buddy Ian was still using Wither Horde for this boss as well. Although only I was on double special at this point, mainly because I had to stress a little bit more because I was on G-Horn duty and a well. So having the double special definitely helped me in my damage, although you don't need to stress it too much in this go around, especially if you have two hunters with some high damage supers. And just like the Ogre encounter, I was still on Sunbracers the entire time because we were still using Revitalizing Blast as our main source of a debuff. And being able to spam Sunbracer grenades that would debuff the boss definitely helped my damage a little bit and keep the boss debuff to help with all other sources of incoming damage. Of course, don't forget your surge mods on your boots before you go into damage and have fun cooking. And remember, the final stand for this encounter is a total placebo effect. Don't worry about it. You'll be all good to go. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this dungeon down below in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this does help you out. There's going to be a lot of testing going on in this dungeon over the next week. And I hope you guys will stick around for it. You guys be safe, take care, consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next one. Adios!